All right, so my, my recorder, the voice of my recorder a moment ago cut off for some reason, but I've got it back on. So the last thing that I was saying here was that uh, this screen here about your profile is very valuable for you to fill in as soon as possible. Again, because why would I follow an egg account? Why would I follow an account with no biography? Why would I follow something that I don't care about? So there's going to be a spot for you to write a biography and think in terms here. This is going to be like you're putting your best foot forward for your business. I've got Victor's Bakery, so I could type here something like San Diego Bakery. But I have, I believe, up to 160 characters for this biography. You might as well use it and type as much as you can here because when someone searches, if they do a Google search, if they do a search in Twitter, if they search, they might find you there based on your keywords. So maybe a better bio here would be something like San Diego Bakery specializing in gluten-free alternatives. We are a family-owned bakery, etc., etc., within the confines of this space. Because what if someone is searching you know, they have search on Twitter there, they have search on Bing, on Google, whatever, they have search, and they're searching for uh, affordable cakes in Chula Vista. And if I have those keywords in my bio, that might help me get found. Obviously, I've only got 160 characters to fill that in. So if you can't write everything you wanted to hear, don't worry, this is not the only place where people will find you if they search. But taking advantage of this place is very important. We are a family-owned bakery, etc. I've got space here to write a little bit. Location. I have various cities here. That'll also help me get found when people are searching via, uh, via local. This again is to reach an audience. Anyone can find my Twitter account all over the world. But I might care more for the people in San Diego so they can come to my business to buy my products. It's great that I have a hundred followers in England, but they're not going to hop a plane to get my cupcakes that I sell at Main Street. So if it makes sense for you, you can put a location. If it doesn't, don't put anything. And you can be funny here and put something like the earth and it'll take it. Sure. You can put a real location or not. <clears throat> website. If you have a website, I would also put the website address there. The reason for doing that on Twitter or any network is because, let's say I'm going to be tweeting pictures of my cupcakes. That's nice. But let's say I'm going to be tweeting pictures of coupons to buy my cupcakes. Well, I want people to be able to go to my website to buy my cupcakes, to use these coupons. I want to guide people back to my website. Not only can I um, entice people on the network, but then I can bring them back to my website. So you can think outside the box also. What if you do this? What if I put the name of my address, and then I put one of these, what is known as a landing page. A landing page is simply a page that is deeper than the top level of your address. Victor's Bakery is the top level. When someone goes there, it's the home page. They see everything on the home page. This link is a landing page. It's directed to a specific <laughs> lower level, to some degree, secret page on your site. The purpose of this for marketers is to be able to see how effective you're using Twitter. Let me make some notes here. Landing pages. A screen on your site, on your website, users can only get to through a special link. If you get any email newsletters, I get the newsletter from Fry's Electronics, for example, and there's a link. Check out this latest uh, computer. I click and follow that link. That's a special link that I can only get to when I am subscribed to the newsletter. No one can get to that link unless they subscribe. That's how Fry's gets you to su subscribe. When you give your e email address to these companies, they often send you links to specific pages you can only get to if you're a member of the newsletter. 
landing pages. You're not going to get to that sales page, that special page from the main menu. They want people, VIPs, to get to that screen. So I'm saying on that link there, why not maybe direct them to a landing page that assumes you've set up a landing page on your site must be created on your site. Whatever way your site is created, you have to create that landing page. Call it whatever you want, get the link, and then you can put it on your on your social media. Used for exclusive content for your followers. Used to keep track of effectiveness. So many reasons to do that, and a lot of web marketers, a lot of social media people do this all the time. We do this for our clients. So I would have gone over to this website and created twitterspecial.html. I would have created that page, I would have linked it here, and on my Facebook or whatever. And those can all be modified. Everything that we do can be modified, yes. Theme color, you can change your color here, give it a little bit of different color than the plain old blue. You can choose your perfect, you can choose your perfect color here, although you need the color formula. It's a little bit out of our scope. How do you get your color formula? It's out of our scope. But you've got some colors here so that it's not the generic colors. You can put birthday if you want, but really, I wouldn't really do birthday for a business. Um, and then on the right side, select Save Changes. You can always get back to this screen by going back to your icon. Once you've added your logo here, this will no longer be an egg. You will see your logo there, and you can always get back to View Profile. So this goes back to uh, Answer, Tweet First, and have a complete profile. So as soon as you can, complete this profile to entice people to follow you. And then start tweeting. If this is my very first Twitter account, I don't have any tweets yet. It's saying, here, choose your first tweet. You haven't tweeted anything. We can either choose one of these pre-made tweets, or we can write our own. The very first tweet ever was this one. Just setting up my Twitter. The very first tweet was, was that one by by um, forgetting his name at the moment, but the one of the founders of Twitter, uh, Jack Dorsey, he was uh, the first tweet was that. So you can either keep the tradition alive and tweet this as your first tweet, or make up your own tweet. We're going to talk about how to tweet, what to tweet, all of those tips, of course. But for the moment, I'm going to select. I'm just going to tweet my first tweet here. That's fine. So I have one tweet. My goal is three to five or more tweets to entice people to follow me. So let's talk about you know, what is a tweet, how to tweet, and all of that. You have always at the top right corner a button to tweet. You also have, if you go back to your, you see there's a home icon, there's a little uh, birdhouse right there. If you click the home icon that takes you to the home screen and at the top you will have what's happening. You'll have another way to tweet. But whatever screen you're at, there's always going to be a tweet button at the top right. The home screen will be the screen where every tweet that you make will show up here. There's my tweet right there, 37 seconds ago. And the tweets of anyone else you follow. I'm following 21 accounts, so their tweets are going to show up here. Tahur tweeted that on April 4th. Epicurious tweeted this four minutes ago. Food and Wine, 19 minutes ago. Grub Street, 25 minutes ago. So all of the accounts that I'm following, their tweets show up here. If someone follows you, they will see your tweets on their home screen. So anything that I tweet then, my followers could see. 
I'm following 21 and I have a lot to look at. If I'm following 121 accounts, I have even more stuff to look at. If I'm following 500 accounts, I have a lot to look at. This is one possible reason why you might not want to follow a lot of accounts. You're going to have a lot coming through your home screen that you're going to lose track of, perhaps. So we'll look at what these other screens are in a moment. But let's say I want to tweet, maybe a real tweet. So either click on the top right corner, the tweet button, or click on the home screen, the what's happening, and it'll pop up here. They're both the same. We have many things that we can tweet. We can tweet simply text. Hello, here is our Twitter. As I'm typing something, it's telling this countdown is going down. It starts at 140 and it goes down to zero. If I keep typing and typing, you see it's going down, eventually it goes down to zero. And then if I go past zero, and I'd also like to say, eventually it goes past zero, it goes to negative numbers, and then I can no longer tweet. So the limit of tweets is 140 characters. But we're going to see that's not as a big limit as you think because we will be able to add pictures, attach video, attach sound. We can attach a lot of different things. But the character of Twitter is that it's 140 characters at a time. The style of Twitter is 140 characters at a time. And what to tweet is a big nuanced answer that we're about to talk about, but here's the short version. What should you tweet? Content that will make your users, your followers, engage with you. That nebulous answer is saying, post any pictures you want, any text you want, any videos you want, post any content you want that will make or entice your followers to engage with you, to be active. And we'll talk about the activities available, but all of these other accounts, they have all of these stats, all of these numbers here. We'll talk about what these mean, but in short, these are this is engagement. This is activity. People are being active with the things that these accounts are sharing. I want that. I want to get hearts. I want to get whatever that symbol is. I want to get those things. I'll explain what those symbols are. But the point is you want to create content, you want to share content, you want to publish tweets thinking in terms about what is going to resonate with my followers, what are they going to care about, what are they going to most likely click or reply to or share, what are they going to engage with, what are they going to be active with. And as a beginner, you might get writer's block right away. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to share. I've already posted these great pictures, but what else can I do? That's why you're also going to follow other accounts to get inspiration. I saw them share a video. I think I can pull out my phone and record a little video behind the scenes in the kitchen and share that. Perfect. It's something that you're showing about your business. Maybe I see someone write an article of a hundred words. I think I have a moment to write something. I'll write that. I'll share that. I'll share a link to my blog. But it's going to be content that people will care about. So my tweet that I'm about to make over here, it's not a good tweet at all. Hello, here's our Twitter. It's not a good tweet because it's a dead end. It suddenly ended. What more can we converse about? What more can you reply about or like or, or whatever? A better thing would be, hello, here's our Twitter. What is your favorite kind of cookie? on a summer night? That's a question. Your followers could see this, and right now we don't have any, but we'll get to building followers soon. Let's say I have 10 followers. They're going to see this. Some of them are just going to see it and move on. But some of them, they're going to see a question and they're going to want to answer. We'll see why that's valuable later. We will, we'll see why engagement is valuable later, but our concept is 
maybe questions, maybe open-ended. So we'll say here suggestions, questions. People like to answer them. A question related to your business, a question to get a conversation going. Let's say I'm a realtor. I've got a hundred followers and I'm a realtor. As a realtor, I might put out a question that says, what's your favorite San Diego travel destination? Now the purpose of my Twitter is to hopefully get me people that want to buy a house. But we will see all of these nuances about it doesn't always have to be about the sell, sell, sell. You can, you can mix it up with related topics. I'm tweeting, what's your favorite travel destination in San Diego? What's your favorite staycation in San Diego? I'm not trying to sell anyone a new house or a vacation spot, but I'm just trying to build activity, engagement. Um, if I ask that question, someone might answer. Again, why does it matter that they answer? Why does it matter that they share? We'll talk about that. But I want to engage my users, my followers. And even if I have zero followers right now, a person can search Twitter. A person can search keywords or hashtags and find my tweet and maybe engage. So hashtags. Um, a hashtag is I'm going to say use hashtags. Another suggestion. Use hashtags. Hashtags are keywords, the topic or topics of your tweet. Not every tweet needs to have a hashtag. You can have more than one hashtag. But I'm going to say limit them to one to three per tweet. At a certain point, too many hashtags make you seem like a spammer. Because spam accounts are going to tweet something and put 10 hashtags. And what the hashtag is, is the topic of a tweet. People can search topics. People can search hashtags on Twitter. So the spammers are going to put as many topics as they can, as many hashtags as they can into a tweet in the hopes of accidentally tricking someone to look at their tweet. Because they put so many hashtags on the tweet. To avoid looking like a spammer, one to three tweets, one to three hashtags should be enough for your tweet. If you can get the point across with one hashtag, good. You don't have to force it up to three. Once you're getting up to three, you're starting to look a little spammy. You've got five, six, seven, ten hashtags. You want to reach more people? No, you're a spammer. Spammers do that. One to three. Question. What is a spammer? A spammer is an account that, on Twitter, that they are trying to sell a product or get you to follow them or get you to click a link of, of a product that that is not legitimate. They're trying to trick people into clicking or buying something. They're selling cheap, authentic Rolex watches. They're selling, you know, real medicine. They're trying to get you to do something and they're an illegitimate business. The spammers. Yes. Well, the, uh, with the hashtag in a word, I understand that makes it searchable, but how do you know that people are going to search for that particular word, especially if it's not something generic? Again, I could talk about Twitter for a whole month. That's also another big question that we might get be able to get to into detail. But um, the thing about hashtags is they're the keywords of your of your of your tweets. Yes, and you don't know is this without some research. You don't know if this hashtag is a good one and an effective one. I was about to show that if you start to write a hashtag, and a hashtag is simply written with the pound symbol. It's um, the number three. Shift three is the pound symbol, the hash mark, the number symbol. And let's say I'm going to use the hashtag in this tweet, food. I'm going to start to type food it's going to pop up and give me suggestions. This is one way to see if a tag is worth it. Because if it comes up on the list of suggestions, these are hashtags at the moment that are popular. Food, foodie, food travel, chat, food network, star. 
So as I'm typing a hashtag and it's giving me suggestions, and if any of these make sense for my tweet, for my business, for my product, I could select it. If I select Food Network Star, right now, at the moment, a lot of people are using that hashtag. Uh, I, I, I can see elsewhere how many exactly. But here, if it makes sense, I could use a hashtag because then someone that's interested in this topic will go up here to search and start typing food network star so people use Twitter to find content that they care about by searching Twitter can suggest your tweets to people that might care about it if you're using hashtags if you're creating content that people would care about simply hello Twitter worthless hello Twitter what's your favorite cookie much better it's a question. I added a hashtag. So ask questions, use hashtags. But does that hashtag, if you take a suggestion, does that connect you to other Twitter sites that are using that same hashtag? Basically, yes. Your tweet will be connected with every other tweet using that hashtag. Now the downside is if it's a popular hashtag, other hashtags are going to keep. I mean, other tweets are going to keep coming out, coming out, and your hash, your tweet will be pushed down, because there's so many tweets using the same hashtag, you might get lost in the crowd. So there's a balance in there that sometimes is difficult. Perhaps am I using a hashtag that's no one's using, so no one's searching, so they're not finding me? Am I using a hashtag that's everyone's using, and therefore I'm getting lost in the crowd? I can make up my own hashtag. I can make up a hashtag right now called hashtag Victor's Amazing Cookie Talk. Sure. I can make up a hashtag, make it as long as I want. But remember, everything that you're typing is taking up your character count. So now I have less space here to write something else. So I made that up, and probably no one else on Twitter is using that. So that might not be so valuable for me. Why would someone think to search that? The problem with making up your own hashtag is you need to build momentum for it. I need to use my hashtag over and over in all my tweets. I need to use that hashtag on my website. I need to use that hashtag on YouTube. I need to put that hashtag maybe on my business card. I need to put that hashtag on a poster in my restaurant. I need to build awareness for that hashtag. So I don't quite recommend making up hashtags unless you're prepared to also build awareness for your hashtag and you're already trying to build awareness for your business itself it's a double work so I'm gonna say try to use existing hashtags jump on the bandwagon again that's a double-edged sword if you're doing for example if I used hashtag SB40, anyone know what that one is? Or was it SB50? SB50. Super Bowl 50. It was the 50th Super Bowl, right? That just passed? 50th? Everyone's using that Super Bowl hashtag. Lots of people. I can jump on that bandwagon and get some use out of it, but so many people are using it, I'm going to get lost in the crowd. Question? I know I was trying to say, let me see if I get this right, because it would be useful to talk with you in this field. Let's say that I want as many people to see my tweet as possible, and I have a choice of putting hashtags. Let's use Corvette Diner, for instance, because a lot of people follow it. Would it be better to hashtag Corvette Diner or to at Corvette Diner? Uh, that's a good question. It's different topics, however, it's a little more advanced. We'll get to it soon, but the hashtag is a hashtag keyword. If you do at hashtag, it's not a it's not a hashtag, it's a username. So if you do the at username, you're directing your tweet to that account. If you're doing the hashtag name, you're directing it to everyone using that keyword. If you're doing it there, only they basically are getting targeted. So are, they, are only they seeing it on their feed, or are all the people who are following them also seeing it on their feed? Um, your followers could see it, and they could see it, but not their followers. But if I put 
Actually, I just read this. So it, it depends on what I put at the start. If I put at Corn Fit Diner, then only shared followers can see it. But if I put it in the middle, then any other followers can see it, even the ones that aren't following me, right? Well, we have to differentiate because um, just to make sure, you're not trying to say that those that follow Corvette Diner, you're not trying to say you're trying to show them, right? I am trying to say because then that's that's not gonna that's not gonna work then. That's not gonna none of those are gonna work. You're not gonna force your tweet to be seen by Corvette Diner. There's no way to do that. Whatever the article said, it didn't exactly say what you think it says. What what it's saying is depending on the followers that 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 you have. So. Yes, if you put it at the beginning of the tweet, at the end of the tweet, there's different nuances. But basically, you cannot, you're for, you cannot force your tweet to be shown to other tweets, to other accounts of those that you are following. So it'll be better here to use a hashtag. More people can, can see it that way, perhaps. So I'm trying to write this tweet. I'm going to add a little text, a hashtag, and so forth. I'm going to click Tweet. I have one more tweet to entice people. I'm going to go back and click again. I can add a photo. I'm not limited to text. I can click the little photo icon. And then I can select a photo. You don't have to do this, but we've got a few, well, maybe for practice, if you'd like to see this. If you click the little photo icon in this open window, if you scroll this panel all the way to the top, we have some sample pictures that you can play with. Any tweet that you can create, you can delete it. Um, but the thing about pictures is, I can attach a sample picture. I had 140 characters to start off with, and it went down to 116. How many characters did I lose? 140 minus 116. 20, 24. So it took away 24 characters to display a photo in my tweet. But the good news is I can attach up to four pictures, and it will no longer decrease my character count. I can make like a little photo album up to four pictures and all four of them will still take the 24 characters. And I can still add text and a question and hashtags. So I could say, um, again, these pictures don't relate to this topic of the business at all, but I could say uh, what's your favorite travel destination? I ignored any suggestion on the hashtag. I wanted to write travel. What's your favorite travel destination? Victor, can you um, modify your placement and your size of your photographs? No. That, that's done all automatically. It won't show like that. It'll show more like a grid with different sizes. So let's say I'm going to tweet this. I added some pictures. I'm going to click Tweet. So it's going to look something like this. I added four photos, so one of them's big and the others are small. And it's going to choose sort of a random sizes once you tweet, but a person will be able to click the tweet to see the larger photo. It might also crop it, but it's going to let them click to see the large version. You don't have any control of that really, it'll just one picture up to four pictures and then the person can see it. So I have, I have 140 characters, I can add text, I can add pictures. One, one big thing that you cannot do is edit your tweets at the moment. They may change. They've been thinking about it. Whoops, I misspelled destination. I cannot go back to edit my tweet. Let me confirm that because I don't believe they've activated it. Nope. They didn't. 
after it's sent, you can't edit your tweet anymore. You can delete your own tweet, yes, but you can't go back to edit an existing tweet. I can on my phone. Did you delete it or did you edit it? Did you have an option for edit post? Possibly on the phone. They often release some features on the app first. So maybe on the app they're giving us the ability now to edit. But for the last 10 years, we could not edit our tweets. They're trying a few different things. So possibly on the app you can. You can delete your own tweet. So perhaps if you don't have the feature to edit, at the very least, what you could do is notice at the bottom of your tweet we have all these icons, which I'll explain. And one of them is three dots, which is more. If I click there, I have all of these options that we'll talk about, but one of them is delete. So on the website, I can delete. And maybe on the app now they're letting us edit, but here's the worst case scenario. I delete the tweet and I share it again spelling it properly this time. So I've been posting a few things. If I go back, I can also, this is new, um, this may or may not be valuable to you. This is going to depend on your target audience. Because if you take the SEO class, search engine optimization class, in there we talk about the value of a marketing strategy. Right now, I'm just thinking of tweets off the top of my head. When we do this for a client, we have a plan. We say, this week we'll be tweeting this, next week we'll be tweeting that, we have a plan. We have it written down, we have it strategized, we have a marketing strategy document. That's going to be a little bit better than thinking of on the spot what to write. And so, depending on your audience, who you're trying to build, you're going to figure out what to share. One of the latest things that we can share is a GIF, an animated GIF, an animated picture. If you click on that, that opens up search, and then that lets you attach a variety of animated pictures. I'm going to search cookie. And it's going to search for a variety of animated pictures regarding cookies. Let's do Cookie Monster. So I'm going to attach Cookie Monster. Obviously, it's okay for me to add this picture. It's part of the Twitter system. Sometimes people ask me, is it okay for me to, for me to use other people's pictures? Well, if it's inside the Twitter system, the short answer is yes. The long answer is maybe. The topic of copyrights and all that is a complicated one really to get into, but let me tell you from the real world, from what we do for our clients, 99% of the time, we are sharing stuff for our clients that they have created or that we have created for them. If a restaurant hires us, we're going to take photos of their hamburgers. I'm not going to search Google to find a picture of a hamburger to share it. I don't know if someone else owns that picture. I don't know if it's copyrighted. I don't want to get into that. I don't want to, you know, I, I could claim fair use. Great, that's for the courts to decide. I don't want to get my client into the courts. So most of the time, you're going to be creating original content on all of these networks. Suggestions. I should actually put this one number one in capital letters. Original content. Your picture that you created, that you shot, your drawing that you made, your video that you created, your blog that you wrote, as much as possible original content. That's not to say that it's not okay to use other people's content, but again, it's a it could be problematic. Someone could hold a copyright on that amazing photo you found. And then they tweet to you and say, you use my photo, you owe me $100. Or, you use my photo, here's my lawyer. Obviously, those are the worst case scenarios. Why get into any of that at all if you always have the ability to share your own content? I'm not artistic, I don't have a camera, blah, blah, blah. Well, you have, for example, the built-in search here on Twitter, I don't own Cookie Monster. I, I don't work for Sesame Street, but it's part of the Twitter system, so I can use it. How many characters do you get if you upload a video? Well, 
we haven't talked about video yet, but uh, video is related to a link. And on the link, I think it takes uh, 13 characters per link of a video. This one here, this animated graphic, this also took up the space of a photo, which is 24 characters. Notice I can only add one animated graphic at a time. And notice I cannot add any more regular graphics. It's one or the other. Let's say here, when it's been a long week. So again, I'm not always trying to sell something. I don't always have to ask a question, but I'm going to share something that my followers would care about. I, I'm going to assume that those that follow a bakery care about baked goods. So here's a baked good related image. Maybe I'll just simply say something like, um, I can also do this. I can do uh, sale this Saturday. Use our coupon code cookie99 on our website. And I type my website address. If you type a web address, that also takes up some characters. But the website link can be any length and it's not going to decrease my character count. So I can add more than one link. Victor.com, it took up some amount. I'm going to add another one. Victor'sBakery.com, it took another one. So each of these I can have, I can have a huge address. Doesn't matter. I still have not gotten past the limit. But links, I would say, related to hashtags, don't overdo it. Spammers put a bunch of links for you to accidentally click on and get a virus. So to not look like a spammer, one valid link really should be all that you need. And if I'm putting a link and a hashtag, and another hashtag, again, at a certain point, you start to look like a spammer. You start to look like an illegitimate account. You're trying too hard. You're putting a link and a tag and another tag and a picture and too much. Be judicious. Be, be direct. One idea per, per tweet. This is a perfectly valid tweet here. I, I put a picture. It's funny. My followers might like that. But then now I'm doing one of these selling tweets. These other ones that I was doing were kind of just like getting conversations started and getting followers to interact and such. But this is one of the kinds of tweets that I'm, the purpose is I'm trying to sell something. And it's perfectly fine to do these kinds of tweets. What I would say though is balance the selling tweets and the community building tweets don't always be about selling, selling, selling. You're going to turn off your followers and then they will unfollow. Why do I want to follow an account that's always advertising in my face? So I'm going to say balance the hard sell type tweet with the community building tweet. And again, this stuff here will apply with some variation on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, everything. Whatever we're talking about here, we can do a variation of it on Facebook as well when we talk about Facebook. Question? Would you say then that about when you search for other businesses for reasonable frequency to tweet? Perfectly reasonable frequency, yes. We're going to say frequency at least once, one time per week. Perfectly fine. One tweet per week? That's a perfectly fine basic strategy, yes. Because we're going to see many other accounts are going to tweet like once per day. That's fine too. 
you're going to see, see some that are tweeting five times per day. That's fine too. But those that tweet more often, that use social media more often, often have a stable of people to help do that. If I'm running my business and now I've got to do my Twitter, I'm not going to be able to pull it off every day. Once a week is better than nothing because I create a Twitter account where so many people create a Twitter account, so many businesses, and they use it very, very judiciously. They read somewhere, make sure you tweet every day. So they tweet every day, but then they get burnt out and they miss one day and they say, I'll do it tomorrow. And they've missed two days and say, I'll do it next week. And they mix next week and they stop tweeting. So don't burn yourself out. Don't, unless you have a lot of content to share, once a week, one tweet per week is perfectly fine to start off with. More is better, but I can't quite say that because, again, quality still trumps quantity. So we'll talk about those nuances. Yes? So I'm not following why you get burnt out. You mean that when people tailor them to your tweets and you've got to interact with them? Can you think of a brand new tweet that is original every single day? No, no, I'm just wondering when you say get burnt out, I, I, I was curious about whether you meant just simply coming up with the tweet or do you mean that you have to do something else besides that? Well, that's why I'm asking that question. If you're going to be tweeting something every day, can you think of something brand new to tweet every day that is not redundant? That's how you're going to get burnt out. If you can't think of something new to write, if you can't share something new again and again and again every single day, you're going to get burnt out. Okay. You're also going to get burnt out, yes, by replying to people. You're tweeting so much, now that's a, obviously a bad problem, a good problem to have. I'm so popular, I have to answer so many tweets. But you're going to get, again, so much happening that can you handle being that active? So as a beginner, once a tweet is perfectly fine. Once you get more people to work with you or for you, you can expand and do more. Okay. Question? When we were talking about strategy earlier, I don't see it on here when you get to it. Can you schedule your tweets in advance, like say, when we work on social networking and I'm going to schedule out on Twitter in the next month? You can. Yeah, we don't see it by default to schedule a tweet, but there is a way to do that. We, we, will, we will see it soon, but that's a very good way to do this. That's also a way to help me prevent burnout. Maybe I'm going to spend one weekend and think of 10 tweets, but as I'll show us a little later, then we'll schedule it so that this tweet comes out this week, and the second tweet comes out next week, and the third week is the next tweet. That's a way to spread it out but they don't make it obvious where you do that here. You can see it elsewhere. I think you can see it on the app, perhaps, but we'll definitely be able to see it on another screen we'll get to soon. Yes? Does the time of day matter when you tweet, like morning versus afternoon? There's going to be a lot of articles out there on everyone having the best strategy about how to use any social network, and they're all right and they're all wrong. The reason for that is one size does not fit all. For yourself, tweeting at 2 p.m. might be the best because of your audience. But for someone else, it's the worst time because they're asleep. So I can't really say what's the best time. Every network is different. Every audience is different. That's why the best way to answer that audience is for you to be trying this. I'm already giving us the goal of one to three tweets. Maybe we're going to do those. We're going to do one tweet on Monday at 5 p.m. And I'm going to do the next one on Tuesday at 9 a.m. And I'm going to do the next one, whatever. I'm going to do them all right now. That's okay. But if I myself try to do this and tweet at different times of the day, I might get a better answer for myself because I can easily look up an article and it will tell you. Make sure you tweet at 9, 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. But that doesn't apply to every single company. It might apply to us and it doesn't hurt to try. But I don't really subscribe to make sure you tweet at this time because it's so different for everyone. Question? Um, you can, for example, set your Facebook up so that when you post on Facebook and automatically tweets for you. Are those tweets as effective? Because I know they don't look quite the same. It's more sometimes just like a, a link, but it doesn't post a picture directly with your profile. So uh, some of these networks can let you automatically send its content to another network. Uh, I don't believe Facebook lets you do that anymore. It used to, unless I'm wrong. But anyway, if it does let you, Facebook could let me send my message over to Twitter. Okay, great. Twitter could let me send my tweet over to Facebook. Great. YouTube can let me send my video over to Pinterest. Great. 
The problem with letting it do that for you is that you're not quite customizing your content per audience. The people that are following you on Twitter most likely care to follow you there because of your short messages and the content and the way you share there. The people that follow you on YouTube most likely follow you there because they want to see some video. The people that follow you on Facebook follow you because maybe you can write more or have an, an album with 20 pictures. So this is one that I do agree with that I see in articles several times. Don't auto post between networks. It helps you. It helps you to share to all your networks. But it's not the best because that Facebook post of 200 characters is going to get cut off in mid-sentence for Twitter. That tweet that you crafted perfectly for 140 characters to get sent over to Facebook, you had 500 characters you could have used to reach a better audience on Facebook. And that picture on Instagram, when you share it from Instagram to Twitter, it doesn't even show up on Twitter. It only shows a link. It doesn't show your beautiful photo. So really the answer for that is you should be sharing specialized content per network, which sounds so much more work, but the way you can handle that is let me say here, you should share original content to each network but you can get by by sharing the same photo but mixing up the text. I have one photo and I can put it on all my networks, but I'm going to write about it on each network a little different to entice people. Or maybe the same photo, but I'll put one filter for Twitter, and I'll use a different filter for Facebook, sure. But don't let it automatically say the same text and the same picture on all your networks. Then why would a person follow you on any other network? If I'm trying to get followers on Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest, why would they go to follow me on every other on any other network if I'm sharing the exact same thing on every network? I'll just stick with Facebook. So you share different things to get them to follow you on different networks. Question? I was just gonna say you can see an auto post and you can tell that something's not even engaged or present. So yeah. that's kind of the message that gets sent. Yeah, so you should be as original as possible. It does help us as as beginners to some degree. But those that have more experience in the bigger companies, they get better results and case studies show that companies get better results when they share original content. And we're going to talk about five or six networks in this class. Does that mean you need to post six different things? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. Longer answer is, well, we're going to talk about it in class. But when we do this for our clients, there's usually at least two of us that are part of in my team that are specifically doing the social media. Myself is one of the things I like to do and someone else. And we corroborate with each other and with the marketing strategy of the business and we figure out what we're going to post. And then she posts something and I maybe take the same photo but how can I spin it in a different way for Twitter? And how can she spin it for Facebook? And how can we share it to Pinterest? Yes? Yep, there's sites out there and apps out there that help you automatically share to all the networks and the allure of them is it cuts down on my work but then it's getting into exactly what I'm talking about here. And I believe with Hootsuite and, the, and those other ones you can schedule your content and you can customize it per network to some degree. It's still going to be the work of creating more content so it kind of defeats the purpose of, of using them. But they have some value as a beginner because the purpose of this whole part one and part two is we're going to talk about all of these networks. You're going to see what you like, what's working, and then perhaps you're going to focus on one or two. We'll talk about six of them, but then you'll focus, I really like using Instagram. So, okay, I'll use Instagram. Yes, there's a billion people on Facebook and only half a billion on Instagram, but I think I can find an audience that really cares on Instagram. So have at it. Focus on the one that you like or the two or the seven, but if you're doing that much, you might stretch yourself out too thin and it might not be as effective, and is it really working for you?
So this is my hard sell one. I have something. Buy this. Look at this. Click this, etc. With something funny, I'll go ahead and tweet that. Yes. I got a message that said um, unable to follow. Um, unable. So I'm trying to. Okay. Someone to follow, and it said we are unable to follow more people at this time. More there is a limit because. Huh? It might be that because it is seeing us that there's a lot of people suddenly in one room trying to do this, okay. and Twitter's being too cautious. But there are limits to how many we can follow. Now there are also um, per day. There's all there's limits to how many we can follow, but also limits per day. Yeah, so if I'm trying to follow too many at one time, that could also hold me back. But I think it's mostly because there's a lot of us doing it at once. Yes? In your tweets? Yeah. No, if that's your audience, have at it. No, I don't, I don't think so. You could have been reported, but I doubt it. It's just going to be... Uh, most likely because we've just got a lot of people that are trying to do it at once. So what else I can share? I can share a poll, or you can look at that on your own. You can ask a question, and like, okay, favorite cake? And I'll say chocolate. Um, uh, Rocky Road and uh, birthday, sure. I can't attach further any picture or animation. I can just tweet it. And so my followers could answer, or any random person. I don't, they don't have to be a follower, I believe. Anyone can answer that. And again, I'm not selling anything right now at this point. I'm building community. I'm creating content to entice people to follow me. People might see this and say, oh, they ask fun stuff once in a while. I, I, I want to get into that. I'll click follow. So then they follow me, and I'm building my audience, 1% of them. Then when I do, which of these would you like to buy? And then that is the 1% that are really going to follow through. It's this little icon right here that doesn't really look like a poll, but it's these three lines. Lastly, I have location. Mine is disabled. If you turn it on, what will happen there is it will attach a location to your tweet. Not a lot of people need this one, but what location will do is it will attach a little map basically, to your tweet. And the point of that is, I'm using my Twitter app on my phone, and I'm at my shop on Main Street, and I tweet something, and I say, hey everyone, uh, sale this Saturday. And I attach a location. So people that are in San Diego could click to see that and, and go to my business. They can actually see me locally. Again, if, I'm not, if I don't have a business address, for people to go to, it might not be important to put a location. Isn't that how they would do those flash mobs? Yeah, if you want to get a lot of people to join up together at once, a flash mob, you can do that. You can attach a location and then have everyone come together. Let's take, a, let's take one more short break, and then when we come back, uh, we'll talk about some strategies to get followers, because about what to, to tweet, in general, I can have an idea, give you an idea of what to tweet, I gave you a few, but then what to tweet will be exactly what you need to talk about. So we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk about getting followers. We'll take a break until 8.58, and then we'll go on.